Hello, welcome. We don't want to be here, but we are. Jack and Jack show. Jack Stroudley, how are you? Fantastic. Well, not fantastic, but, you know, as good as I can be. Off the last night, well, the time recording, not sure when this is going mm. out. Yeah, this will probably go out Wednesday. This is the Tuesday. Um, did the podcast this morning and had my two cents and, and, and now we're back again to, to talk some more. Um I've pretty got pretty much got all my emotions uh, about last night. How about you? What, what would you like to say on it? Uh, it's it, look, it, it's frustrating because it's Brentford, and for anyone who was at the game on Monday night, uh, they are just a bit annoying, aren't they? Just every song's about Fulham, and you know, Fulham get battered, uh, bees up Fulham down. I was thinking about Diego Forlan at one point, which is all a little bit weird. Um, but look, it, I think there's a you've got to kind of try to remain slightly level-headed. It's March and we're on 39 points. And if you were to pick one of the four West London derbies to lose this season, you would have picked this one. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think that's important. I think coming out the ground, we took a different route. We went to Chiswick Park Station and we avoided every single Brentford fan you possibly could. Bear in mind they were still in the ground celebrating... Um, celebrating the, the win, and so the, the journey home was was fairly okay. I saw you uh, negotiating an Uber with with, yeah. with someone across the road. Split split an Uber back. It was, I actually bumped into Sammy. Um, oh yeah, at Gunnersbury Station, and Gunnersbury Station for some reason is closed an hour. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I'm absolutely screwed here. Look for a bus, couldn't get one, and then found a Fulham fan who's heading back in the same direction. So split an Uber. But anyway, that's. Not important, but that was a that was a minor win from yesterday. I think it all started to go downhill when uh, I got into the concourse and bought a, a beer named Groshk, and it was absolutely terrible. Um, <laughs> picture of Sam Miguel, but ten times worse. It was. Uh, I, I think I gave it to you in the end. You tried to you tried you tried to pie it off on me, and I, <laughs> even I was, like, I was like, this is absolutely vile. Five pound twenty five down the drain, um, and from there, I mean, look, I, we didn't play brilliantly. I don't think we played brilliantly in our last four games in all comps, uh, including last night. But but then again, we still we still got good results in the last three games. But you, you're going to get one of those games where if you're not at it, and a team like Brentford, who are 11 unbeaten coming into the game, are at it, they're going to punish you. And you know, I'm not disappointed in the fact we lost. I'm disappointed in the fact that it was Brentford that we um we had this level of performance against. Then again, no Paulinia, uh, and and that was a big issue for us. I think Jack. Yeah, it was frustrating. You know, you look at the goals and there's a, de there's a deflection at the start of one half, a penalty at the start of the other, and then at 2-1 we're trying, emphasis on trying, to get back into the game and they mm. catch us on the break from a, a silly Cedric Suarez mistake. Um, but yeah, look, it wasn't ideal really from start to finish, to be perfectly honest with you. we were. It reminded me, the start of the game reminded me very similar to how Brighton started. It's just the fact that Brentford were able to put the ball in the back of the net and Brighton weren't. Mm. Um, yeah, Polinia was a appeared to be quite a big miss. Sasalukic looked okay, was quite lucky to probably still be on the pitch in the second half, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah. Um, Mitrovic was isolated, he didn't really have much service, he didn't really do a lot. Pereira looked a little bit leggy in the 10. Willian didn't really contribute to much either. Um, as a whole, it was a pretty torrid, torrid night. Torrid night is is a way to put it, but you again, if you look at pers perspective and context of the season, you're allowed an off game. Yeah. I know it's obviously disappointing in the manner of what team it was against, but but for large parts of the season, this team has overperformed, over um, exceeded expectations. I think if you look at, I think the Pereira criticism is very harsh. This is a guy who's played every basically every game this season for us, league and cup. Bar, I think Crawley. Uh, he's played in the 10. He runs his socks off for 90 minutes and because he doesn't have an out-and-out -out replacement, unless you look at someone like uh, Luke Harris, who's a little bit inexperienced, he is going to have to fill that void of 90 minutes of football week in, week out. And it it will tie you out, especially in the way in which we press from the front. Um, I think off the ball, he gives us so much in that press, uh, winning the ball high up the pitch. I was saying on the podcast earlier, dead ball situations has been his real strength as well this season. The free kick that basically led to our equaliser was from his uh, his free kick, which was really well struck. 
um, the, the the criticism on Pereira, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna die on the hill and 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 uh, defend him because he's put in a lot this season. Considering where he's come from as well, he came from Brazil, where I think they were like partway through the season, maybe, or they, they he'd played a lot of games within that last season. The Manchester United stigma that came with him as well on the back of it, and he's been a revelation in this silver system. Um, but yeah, just one of those nights where, and and even last night he he was he created both goals. It, the goals were rebounds off both of his shots. So, what are your thoughts and feelings about Andres Pereira? Yeah, I, I did. I didn't. I, didn't, I know he contributed to two game, two goals. I didn't necessarily think he had his, his best game last night. But I, again, like you said, I, 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 I'm not going to sit here and try and, and slate anyone too much because everyone's had a fantastic season. I think ultimately, and I don't, I don't want to be too reactionary, but I think the the fact you know, Marcus Silva's got. 14, 15 players who he, he likes and he sticks by. And I think that yeah, there are going to be times in the season where everyone, where, where you go for a, a bit of a burnout and people do look slightly leggy. And I just think that we're currently in one of those stages. Fortunately, when we were out of the stage, we've we picked up a lot of, accrued a lot of points. So, you know, if we do start to, you know, drop off a little bit, as frustrating as it is, you know, a bit of hindsight, a bit of perspective, you know, we were predicted to go down from everyone this season. Exactly, exactly. And, and this is the thing. I mean, I've talked about it so much with Joe Sansom earlier this season about the mindset of the Fulham fans. What are the what are the expectations? You know, we got giddy when we beat Brighton because we were like, oh my God, we actually genuinely could get Europe. And we still could. Like, it, it's not out of the... Yeah, we're still, we're still, we're still seventh. We're still exactly. Seven. We're still above Brentford. Albeit, you know, Brighton and Brentford do have games in hand over us. We're in an FA Cup quarter final against a Manchester United team who've just come off a 7-0 defeat. And they'll have to pick themselves up quickly. And I think we can get at them. And if we really put our eggs in the basket of the FA Cup, we could get to a semi-final. We're only 90 minutes away. It's 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 doable. It's on. Um we are, we will we will stay up. That's fine. Um and I, I I just it's frustrating because I think someone said it on the podcast this morning, fans will always want more and and you know. Yeah. Is there a slight ungratefulness to our attitude towards this team at the moment? Potentially, is that because we're seeing the potential that Marco Silva can take this team forward, the potential it has, perhaps? But also, is it a case of realising we are a newly promoted team? I mean, the other two newly promoted teams, Bournemouth and Forest, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination of a relegation battle, and we are. Uh, I don't know what to be annoyed at anymore. It's, a, it's one of those very... The, the 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 water's very muddied. I'm not sure what should upset me, what I should expect, what can I expect, what's what's too much for myself and us fans to, to, to demand from this team. Because on paper, 39 points at this stage of the season is absolutely remarkable. We've had some wonderful memories, some wonderful away days this season, Jack. It's just all very confusing. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it didn't help the fact that the context of who we played yeah, last night. Yeah, you know, as, as as frustrating, like as annoyed as we would have been if, if that had been, I don't know, Crystal Palace and we'd have lost three two. You'd be annoyed, but it would like it's because it's Brentford and it's it all kind of lulled into a bit of a perfect storm for them uh, last night. To be perfectly honest with you, and yeah, I think you're allowed to change your expectation and obviously you're frust- be frustrated at the fact that we haven't performed. We didn't perform last night or sorry Monday night at the level that um, we've we've come to expect of Fulham this season. And I think that, you know, as we said, you you kind of expected a bit of a burnout, but, and judging off of where we are, and it's just, you, now fans are thinking European is slightly on, and, you know, now we've lost this, it's not, so it is, you're a little bit all over the place of, you know, what to expect, what to be happy with, what to be frustrated with. So, yeah, it is a little bit confusing at this time. What is apparent is that whatever happens this season, we're going to come out of it in May with enormous credit in the bank. We've been a great asset to this Premier League season. We've brought a lot of entertainment, a lot of goals, a lot of contributions of very, very good games against teams right at the top of the table. We've pushed Chelsea. Um, Chelsea, we've pushed... I don't know why I started with Chelsea. They're nowhere near the top. We've pushed Arsenal. We've pushed, <laughs> we've pushed Spurs, United, City. City. Yeah. Like it's, 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 it's been brilliant. We've lost, uh, we've lost 10 games in all comps, of which we lost 10 games last season, the championship winning season, one in the cup to Crawley, nine in the league. Um, and 
going off a trend that apart from it was when we played Spurs away and Arsenal away in between that we won a game, but that those losses have come in bunches of two. So are we going to lose to Arsenal? Potentially. It's not yeah. the, the, the most ideal game to have next. Um, I just want to make one more point on the, the Brentford game. In the last three games, we've had Anthony Taylor and Michael Oliver as our referees, of which they are lauded by the Premier League as the two best referees in this league. They get Champions League, they get the World Cups, the European Championships. And so I, I thought they I thought they were both really poor. I think Anthony Taylor had a very good referee performance when he refereed our playoff final against Aston Villa. And I've always respected him for that since then. But last night I thought he I thought he he lacked a bit of backbone, which is really disappointing because I really like him as a referee. Yeah, I think I think a big one for me. Um people are talking about um the like Tony potentially being sent off. I'm seeing on Twitter a lot. But the the penalty I'm I d I don't know what your thoughts on the penalty is, but I'm I'm I, 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 I can't understand how it's a penalty. Not not one player, not one fan appealed for it in the stadium. I remember just looking around, like, what what has happened, and then I looked it back, and he does kind of kick out him, but he's already going. He's going to ground before the contact is even made. It's yeah, it's absolutely insane. And yeah, there is the argument for the Ivan Tony one, but then on the flip side, Sasha Lukic probably should have got a second yellow card as well. So it's you know swings, swings and roundabouts. Swings and roundabouts. But there was there was a lot of cheap fouls yesterday, which I I, I don't want to be one of these people who blames the ref because we've lost because no. we, we didn't deserve to win yesterday. We were really no. poor. But we weren't helped by the fact there were a lot of soft decisions that I feel went in the favour of Brentford. From a referee, you'd expect more from. That's yeah. that's what's annoyed me. Um, yeah, the, I won't lie to you. I've watched the highlights back once. I didn't <laughs> go back and re-watch the, the, uh, the replays of the penalty. I, I just wanted to get it over and done with and, and, and move on to Sunday. I, and actually, we, we probably spent more time talking about this game than I would have uh, actually wanted to. <laughs> so <laughs> let's let's round off this video by talking about the Arsenal game. Um, Arsenal, of course, in the last few games have done some incredible comebacks against Villa and uh, Bournemouth. They beat Everton very comfortably last week uh, in the Premier League. This is as tough as it gets. And, you know, because we've had such a good season, we haven't been worrying about relegation. We've sort of, I certainly have admired the title race that, that has that has been this season. Uh, and I will openly say that I would rather Arsenal won the title yeah. than Manchester City, yeah, just no, because it's a new narrative and it's a little bit more exciting. That being said, I would love to win this game of football and stop Arsenal from winning the league if it meant that that would be the, the factor as to why they haven't won the league. Give me your thoughts because, you know, they're a remarkable team this season that have done incredible things, especially about Gabriel Jesus for a few months as well. Yeah, Arsenal have been absolutely fantastic um, from start to finish. I've been I've been so impressed with them. Mm. Mikel Arteta is doing an unbelievable job and, and the squad now looks just dangerous. Odegaard, Saka and Marcelli as a, as a free behind what, what is now Nketia is um, is ridiculous. It's, it's Trossard. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, Trossard as well. There's Trossard as well. And then you've got Smith Rowe who can come off the bench and do and do something as well. They, they've just got a fantastic squad. Um, and Mikel Arteta deserves full praise for that. He's been... A, a re, start, I remember start of last season, a lot of people were calling for his head. They lost to Brentford. And they lost, ironically, lost to Brentford. They lost to... City and they lost to Chelsea and a lot of people were calling for a head and it's like no give him time and that's worked out and they look really really good value for where they are in the league and in terms of Sunday it's 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 tough it's obviously tough let's not try and be around the bush and you, you add on to that fact we don't have Joao Polinia we're not in the best run of you know we're coming off the back of the Brentford game Mitrovic hasn't scored in a while you know it's it seems it seems against us but you've other teams have shown in the in the past few weeks that you know if you do get at Arsenal, you you can score. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason to suggest that we won't do that. We we done it at the Emirates. Mm. Let's. Uh, I wonder what our kickoff plan will be for for Sunday <laughs> if we if we get the toss. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a tricky game. Um, I think our home form has been very very good this season. We've only lost three games this season at home to Newcastle. Um, Manchester United and uh, and Spurs, oh, yeah. yeah, teams that were up there. So I mean, let me. Look, I don't want to be defeatist and say there's no shame in losing to 
Arsenal that there, there isn't. And in fact, even there's no real shame of losing away at Brentford with the form they they have as well. With the, you know they beat Liverpool this season, they've um, they beat Manchester United. So I mean, but let's move past that. It's 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 a case of can we put up a fight against the league leaders? Can we drag ourselves off the floor from from Monday night uh, and go? You know what? We're at home. We're going to stamp some sort of authority here and 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 see what we we've we've got to give. No, Paulinia is is an issue, and the fatigue is an issue. But in terms of making changes for this team, there was an argument in the podcast about playing a, a left sided player on the right in Willian with Solomon, who's also a left-sided player, like Bobby, Bobby Deagle over Reed could play on the right. Wilson could play on the right. Where do you stand on this team? Because I know it's so fresh from Monday night and the emotions are high or certain players should be playing, but but we are quite thin on the ground with no TC, with no Paulinho. Yeah. Um, as much as I've, I've seen people suggest, you know, certain players being dropped and this, that and the other, we'd, unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. And I think that as much as I want to, we're obviously still in the European shout. I think from the end of the season, if we don't qualify for Europe, which is looking more and more likely in terms of the fact that other teams have got so many more games in hand than us, mm. I think you can look back at it and say, you know, we weren't ju- we weren't ready in terms of squad depth. You know, that showed against Brentford, and you know, everyone's looking a bit leggy and this, that, and the other. But unfortunately, because of that, I'm I don't really think you you can really make any changes. Really, Leno starts, Ted, Cedric came on and. Was said you can't even play. Oh, of course you can. Yeah, he's he's he's, he's on loan. Mm. So yeah, that'll be that'll be Tete and then Diop and Ream. Um, I've seen some people suggesting about Robinson was who, who didn't have his best game, but who who, who gonna play? Because I was injured. It's got it's got to be Robinson. Midfield to I guess you go Reed and Lukic again. The only other option is Bobby Reed, or or drop Andreas back like he did towards the end of the game uh, on on Monday night. Mm. Um, Mitrovic, oh, there's maybe an argument for Nisius who has had two goal contributions in the past month, but I, I can't see Mitrovic not playing. He has to play, he, he has to start. Solomon's a, a given. Uh, I don't think Willian had his best game on, on Monday night, but I, I, I wouldn't it be funny if he performed yeah, against Arsenal? I, I can't remember saying this, but I, I think I think it's unchanged, not because yeah. I just we just don't have a choice. Out of no choice, exactly yeah. that. Um, yeah, what, the, the Mitchett's thing. There was a question in the podcast that really triggered me about: Should we re- like be dropped if we drop Mitchevich now? That is as bad as what Parker did. You know, down on his luck, uh, and he's dropped out the team because he's not contributing or scoring. Every striker goes through a period like this. It's 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 so 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 part and parcel of football. Um, we, we, honestly, and, and uh, I've I said it before, the amount that Mitch Rich has given us since 1718. You put a ball in the box, Mitch Rich is going to attack that ball. And, you know, if one comes off and he nods one down in bottom corner, he's going to be a hero again. Yeah. Mitro, yeah. Mitro, like everyone, like everyone's going to lord him. He just needs one goal. Doesn't matter in whatever context it is. In off his ass, like a proper cliche that, but I just the, the the impatience that fan have fans have over particular strikers and players who don't perform for three, four, five games in a row is really triggering, especially when he's so key to the way in which we play. If we pop Vinicius up top, he's not going to have that impact. We saw it at Brighton, even you know last night he didn't, he wasn't his best, Mitrovic, but give him time. Because he still scored 11 goals this season. And the goals have been shared about the whole team. And that's the reason we're doing so well. It's not like he's the only goal scorer we have. We're sitting 17th in the league and we're looking for inspiration. We have goals all over the pitch. I'm sorry, Jack. It does annoy me. It does annoy me. Um, <laughs> no, I, 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 do, I do agree with you that Mitrovic should play. I think Carlos Vinicius does, does deserve a bit of credit. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, he's come off the bench a few times now and... and, and done a job he's he seems to be he seems to enjoy that kind of role so I think stick with that for now and yeah Mitrovic has done so much for Fulham I think to to, to bench him just because he's going for a little bit of a rut would be would be quite harsh on him so I think yeah unchanged for me on Sunday unchanged and a score prediction to boot I I, I never like back I, I never like saying Fulham are going to lose but I 
it's, there's no shame. There's no shame in losing to Arsenal yeah. as long as you give it a good go. Which I think we will, in fairness. Um, so I'm going to go 2-1 to Arsenal. You know what? I was also going to say 2-1. But I'm going to back the big man. Yeah? We go 1-0 down, we equalise. We go 2-1 down, we equalise. And it's going to be through Mitrovic. It's going to be a Desmond. And um, it will be the narrative two drop points for Arsenal. Um, and, and I think that another goal will come from someone like Pereira, maybe. Or Solomon. I mean, he might score again. Yeah, totally he will be Solomon. But Jack, I think, is there anything more to say? I mean, we're a little bit down. You know, losing a game is never nice, especially against them lot. But we beat them 3-2 in the last minute at Craven Cottage. We'll still have that moment. We will see them next season. There's no doubt about that. And we can do it all over again. Yeah, context of the season, it's not, it's not the end of the world. And look, if they want to sing full and get battered everywhere they go, despite the aggregate being 5 all, And, us and being, we literally have never been battered this season. And, and, and <laughs> us being above them in the league, that's that's fine by me. I will. I, I, I They can have it if they want. But yeah, a bit frustrating, but what can you do? I think the final thing to maybe note, if anyone interested in going to Manchester United for the mm. FA Cup, Ticket prices have been announced and they're, they're not great. The cheapest adult ticket is £46. Um, coach travel for those with a season ticket or a member, I believe, is £25 for an adult. So you're, you're looking, it's a it's an expensive day out. Could be well worth it if we get to Wembley, but yeah. I can't justify those prices. Um, I think personally I will go because it is a big chance of... The FOMO, and if you, the FOMO, the FOMO, the FOMO, FOMO yeah. Yeah. And also Old Trafford's a good day out. Manchester's got some cracking bars where you can get some very, very cheap drinks and, and, and you know, dance the night away, basically. So I, I think Manchester United had this issue with West Ham in the, in, the, in the last round with the ticket prices. Extortionate, like genuinely mental. But um, this could be a, a big day. If we take some good numbers and, and we got Paulinho back in the team, it could be the arch. It could be literally going to university, your uni, <laughs> my old uni, for a two, semi-final. Two minute, two minute walk. Two minute walk to the torch. <laughs> I wonder if we get the torch, we get the green man. Whatever happens, it will be it will be a, a great one. Jack, thanks so much for being here today. Cheers, cheers for having me. Good, always a joy coming on the show and venting. Shame it wasn't as positive as it usually is, but that's what happens over a thirty-eight game season. Yeah, you're not going to win every game, like. <laughs> It's actually quite weird because over the last year and a half, we've lost 21 games in, oh, quick maths, uh, 21 into 46, add 60 odd, <laughs> Still, almost 70, maybe. I'm not sure. You know, someone will have to do that in the, in the comments, but it's extraordinary. 10 games last season, 10 games this season, so that's 20 games, not 21, like, it's, it is, it is, and, and this is mental. It's mental. Yeah. It, <laughs> Let's just it's end been, it there. It's been, it's, been, it's been a fantastic year and a half, and I think people need to need to remember that. It's never it's never nice to lose, especially when it's, you know, the, the, the little neighbours giving it the big ones. But we had, we had, we had, the, we had, we had the night against Chelsea. We had a 3-2 win against them lot. And, you know, the, as I said, the draw, draw the bridge. If you're going to take one to lose, you're gonna, you, you don't want to lose one, but you're going to take this one. It is important to remember as well that rivalries are there for a reason. If you had a whole season where you weren't playing a QPR, a Brentford, a Chelsea, it's quite mundane because there's no real edge or a big game. And look, three out of the four, we've got good results. Um, very, very good results. Uh, and, and you were playing a Brentford team who were in the form of their life at home We've justified it enough. I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure everyone feels better now. Jack, thanks so much for being here and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks for having me. Take care, everyone. Enjoy the Arsenal game. Um, and, well, come on, Fulham. Fulham. <laughs>